Hi, I'm Alex and welcome to Pugs and Paperbacks. Today I'm going to share with you the seven books I read in April. You might be able to hear Leo purring in the background. He's literally coming over right now. He's very clingy today. <laughs> the first book I read in April was Hildy on the Record by Hildy Lisiak. This was a memoir about a 14 year old girl just recalling her childhood and how she ended up being a viral sensation at age eight or nine. <laughs> Leo's literally right here. Okay, let's finally do this. The first book I read was Hildy on the Record by Hildy Lisiak. I was sent this for review from K Publishing. And this is a memoir about a 14 year old girl, Hildy, recalling the events of her childhood as she follows in the footsteps of her father, who was also a reporter. This was so interesting. However, it has a lot of trigger warnings and I was not prepared for the heavy content. I thought it was really cool to just learn about reporting and journalism. I have had some background knowledge about journalism, but this goes into some terms and we just get to see how Hildy became a viral sensation at age nine, I believe. It was for reporting a murder and she blew up. She got to meet Malala. She got her own series of children's books. There is an HBO Max series that she worked on and she's only 14. In April, I did a video where I swapped my screen time with reading time and I read this book. So I'll have that video linked up above. Then I finally finished reading Game On, edited by Laura Silverman. This is 15 stories of wins, losses, and everything in between. I have a whole reading vlog, so I won't talk too much about it here, but I enjoyed it. I gave it a four star on Goodreads because I was sent an e-copy of it, but then I just didn't read it for a couple months. And then I went to my library and I picked it up. I really enjoyed it. This was one of my most anticipated releases and it didn't disappoint. I honestly wish it had more. And if you want to know more of my thoughts, you can go and watch the reading vlog. My one biggest complaint was trigger warnings. Only a couple stories have trigger warnings and I just believe every single story should have had them because it just made no sense to me. There were a lot of hard hitting and dark stories. So I think that trigger warnings are definitely warranted for heavy stories like that. But overall, I really enjoyed this and I would recommend it. Then I did a video where I had Wordle pick my TBR and I read three books. My first word was Cheek. So I read Cheek on Cheek, which is a companion novella to the first novella in this novella series. And I was just left really confused. It is about a woman named Nadine. Apparently she is the villain in the first novella. And she is upset because this guy she was seeing proposes to another girl. So her thought process is to just move on and find another guy. So that's what this whole novella is about. It's just Nadine trying to find new guys and dating and all, which is totally fine. Um, it does have queer rep. I would believe that she's maybe pansexual, but it's not explicitly said on the page. She just says that her sexuality is fluid, but there are some instances that rubbed me the wrong way and I just wish I had more context for. That's the one thing is that this book just needed more context and more development. If I read the first novella, I think this would make more sense. So maybe I'll do that in the future, but this was just okay. I don't really have much more to say about it. I really talk about it more in that vlog. The next book I read for Cheek was One Butt Cheek at a Time. Gert Garibaldi's Rants and Raves and I didn't hate this one. This follows her through her sophomore year of high school and it's more of like a slice of life. My one problem was that there is not really a problem or anything. It's more of just like a slice of life. We're just following her and her inner thoughts as she goes through sophomore year up until homecoming and I appreciated what was in here 
there was an Achillean romance. There is sex positivity. Gert is learning about sex in a positive way in school, which I really enjoyed. Um, there are some gay stereotypes associated with the gay character, but since this is set in 2007, I actually was pleasantly surprised that we did have an Achillean romance and we didn't actually just have a gay character be a plot device or like the butt of the jokes or the gay best friend. Uh, so th I actually enjoyed this. I don't know if I would recommend it for 2022 but I don't think it was bad and I actually enjoyed my reading experience. Then I ended out the video with the word ample and I read Ample Hills Creamery which is an ice cream cookbook about Ample Hills Creamery in New York and I really enjoyed this one. I am just reading all of the food related books this year. I ended up just buying another one and I just love that this is my new genre. <laughs> so I really enjoyed this. You read about the origin stories behind each flavor in this creamery, how they became, and there are little stories of the characters that they've made up. And there's also ways for kids to be helping out in the kitchen as well. So this was just all about how to make ice cream. I've never read a book about making ice cream before. So this was actually a really interesting read and I could not stop talking about it after I read it. Then I ended out the month reading Perfect on Paper by Sophie Gonzalez. This was my Patreon book club pick. We have a bi-monthly book club over on Patreon. We are voting on our June book right now. So if you want to join us, the link is down below. You can pledge $1 and you can join us. I absolutely loved this. It was amazing and I am obsessed with it. We have been having so much fun with the book club and the picks so far have been really good. And it was so fun to talk about this book in our live discussion because we were just raving about it and how great it is. This is about Darcy Phillips. She's a junior in high school and she runs this locker that is also a relationship advice column. So kids in school will send her letters and she'll email them back advice and they pay her and she's just got a business going on. This is strictly anonymous and no one knows it's her. Because I associate media with other media, I immediately got Radio Rebel vibes from this the Disney movie Radio Rebel. I just feel like these characters were so similar because they do run like these popular things and are anonymous. Darcy is also bisexual. There's a lot of great conversations in this book about bi erasure and just the LGBT community in general. And I really loved Darcy's character because her character development is so nice. The bulk of the story is Darcy helping this boy at her school Alexander Broham. He is from Australia and we really get to see the author's Australian roots thrive in this book. I have read her previously and what I love about Sophie Gonzalez is she writes American school systems and characters so well as an Australian and I just think that that is pure talent. So the book of the story is about Darcy helping Broham because he has relationship issues and he wants to get back with his girlfriend and so he pays her to help him. And I just thought this was brilliant. Like this was amazing. It is worth the hype. I have seen so many of my friends recommend this and just say how much they loved it. And I agree because this was just such a great book. I loved it because I just really connected to the characters and the story. I was really just invested in the story the whole time because we get to actually see the side characters having personalities and we don't just have Darcy going through life. We get to see so many different aspects of people's lives and we get to see Broham who is a rich guy that Darcy doesn't really like at the beginning and we just really get to see their relationship develop throughout the whole book. My favorite scene was when they went to Disneyland. I really enjoyed it. I have an Instagram post up because they talk about 
food so much in this book that I ended up going out to the store and getting the Ben and Jerry's fish food because that is what Darcy and her sister Ainsley eat on rainy days and I just needed to have this because they talked about it so much in the book that I was like I need to experience that and I really enjoyed it. Ainsley is trans and I really enjoyed that it was just very subtle. What I really loved about Ainsley's character is that she had a personality. She was a fashion YouTuber where she thrifted clothes and I thought that it was well done because sometimes when authors write YouTube uh, <laughs> it just isn't realistic but I really liked it because Ainsley was like hey can you shut up because I'm trying to film a video and I need quiet or hey I'm editing a video right now or just things like that and you really just got to see that she has a personality and we get to see subtle transness but I really enjoyed that we didn't just dive into her transness as a whole. We really just got to see her as a trans character existing and that's what I love in a book where there is a side character who is trans. That is the perfect way to do it in my opinion. But to wrap this up, oh my god I love this so much and I will be rereading it because it was so good. I ended up buying it and sometimes I'm nervous to buy books because I'm like oh what if I don't like it? I am so glad that I bought it because now I own it and I can reread it. It was such a fun read and I have not stopped thinking about it. There's so many plot twists and just so much going on. If you want a book about messy queers I highly recommend this. There is a lot of LGBTQ plus rep. There's a non-binary character and there's just so many important conversations in this book and I loved it so much. Then I ended out the month reading I think the only book that I read for my Easter egg hunt TBR. April was such a weird reading month for me because I was focused on filming videos and doing TBRs for that. But the one book I ended up reading was You Are Not Alone written by the Alphabet Rockers and pictures by Ashley Evans and this was adorable and just so validating. This is a much needed and refreshing book. I love the illustrations. It has non-binary black indigenous and disability rep among the characters introducing the readers to why they're here and assuring readers like them or not like them that they are not alone in the world while sharing small ways you can help friends who may not be like you. This is a small step into allyship. I really admired the thought behind it and how detailed the illustrations were to make each character and their story significant. I love the illustrations in this. I just love picture books because they are so amazing and this one did not disappoint. I loved it. The back says you are powerful, you are brave, you are brilliant. Like these illustrations are just beautiful. I really loved the non-binary rep. It says I want you to ask me but I don't like some of the questions. Maybe you don't know which questions feel like friendship and which ones feel like ouch. If you get a feeling inside you like your question might sting, let it go. Don't share it with me. Not all thoughts need to become words in the world. That's my favorite quote. I have a friend who loves me for me, doesn't ask about my body parts, but does want to know what it is like being non-binary, checks in with me when the teachers get jammed up on my pronouns, offers to go shopping with me for school clothes, so I am not alone. My friend holds my truth and stands up with me. They're cool with me being exactly who I am in all the ways. You are not alone. I'll go with you. This is a story, you and me, see? Your history, my history, their history, we learn them together. I am me because you are you. Oh my gosh, this was just so great. I'll have a link down below if you want to check it out. I really enjoyed it because it just reminds you that you matter. That is just a message that I think everybody needs currently. So thank you again to the publisher for sending me this and that is it for my April wrap up. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments what you read in April. And if you want to join my book club, the link for Patreon is down below. Thank you, and I will see you in my next video very soon. Bye.